This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Beachview neighborhood of pittsburgh pennsylvania ready to talk in some indie wrestling and we got another special one for you here this week first of all uh please go check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com and indiewrestling.us you can find past episodes of uh this show on wrestling mayhem show you can check out all the wrestling podcasts on indiewrestling.us you can often find our guests in action over there whether on vod or on the indie wrestling network uh, as well uh, and if you want to drop us a line if you know anybody coming up or want to suggest somebody for on the show hit us up at good times at wrestling or 412 wms 0 if you dig what we're doing if you would bring some value if you if you want to see this thing grow please help us out over at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show so uh, this is part two of the new class uh, this week we talked a uh, 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 previously with uh, the professor and the Man Dime. See, I'm still learning the rest of their names. <laughs> but at least I know that. Uh, no, Elijah Dean, the, the Man Dime, and the Professor Ryan Die. Yes. And, and you know, now we have a new duo for me to learn their names. I know him as the Daredevil and, well, Judo, which actually isn't his moniker, but still, <laughs> it seems to be what everybody is calling you. Uh, but we do have with us, first of all, the Judo one. Uh, <laughs> he is uh, the Rodin. Stevie Stevie LaBelle with us tonight. What's happening, Facebook? I love it. By the way, if you're on the audio, he is he's got the tie, he's got a vest, plus he's got his sweet uh martial arts vest. I don't know what if there's a term for that. It's a cut off gi. A cut off gi. <laughs> 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 and he got the patches and everything like that. That's that's awesome. It's a good look for you. I do. This is how he rolls into the important events. So and also with us is mm. the Daredevil, yeah. Johnny Patch with us tonight. What's up, guys? <laughs> uh i am also dressed well yes tonight. he's dressed well he's got a he's got a good tank top on uh representing what's on your tank top uh, down lucio there? lucio watch him if anyone needs a healer on ps4 just let me know we might have to uh tag you in here this weekend for the uh the, the marathon we're doing for extra life because uh, i know there's going to be some overwatch going down i have yet to play overwatch it's fun it's uh I, it's aggravating i just haven't had a chance to if, if Fortnite wasn't on the phone you know well anyways we got some new guys here, and you guys got to get to know him here over the course of this episode. And first, we like to kind of uh, touch base and kind of ask them, uh, what was your earliest memory of uh, professional wrestling? And this is usually the part with the new guys where I feel really old. <laughs> uh, who wants to go first? Uh, I got it. The earliest memory I have of wrestling, I couldn't have been more than four or five years old. I remember we, uh, my parents took me to see my great grandmother she was in a hospital or whatnot and she really wasn't allowed to watch anything too crazy to mess with her heart rate and i remember my dad would slip on i don't know if it was nitro or if it was uh raw back end but she had a hatred for uh rowdy roddy piper <laughs> like absolutely hated him like the second day uh, my dad would put the channel on there's roddy he, he's like grabbing a chair or something breaths knocked out like he's getting ready to like hit somebody over the head and i remember her just losing it her heart monitors going off oh no nurses come running and they're like we told you you can't watch this anymore and then uh they ended up turning the channel and uh i i don't even know anything about that day or that's the only thing i can remember and that's like the first time i actually remember wrestling before i really started to get into it before i really start to fall in love with it Mm -hmm. it was uh, first you saw kind of the what it could do like yeah. very how very detailed something. what it can do to a monitor to everything <laughs> like what happens yeah. to a person when they're into this thing right yeah that's awesome so so what did you further get into it with like what kind of got you to, to kind of stay uh, on with it what really had my attention was uh the hardy boys mm -hmm. they're uh I would say there are a couple of daredevils as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's what really appealed to me, like them putting their bodies on the line and just like being able to do all these things and captivating a crowd unlike anyone has done before up until that time. 
And uh, what really like set it in stone for me that I wanted to do this sometime in my life, it was a, I, I think I was like eight or nine. It was uh, Jeff Hardy versus Undertaker. It was a ladder match. Oh, it was like on a SmackDown and, or something, yeah, wasn't it, was, it? it? I think it was on Raw. Okay. And like, I remember I, it was a school night. I'm up past like my bedtime. My dad's like sleeping, trying to get ready for midnight shift. I'm hooting and hollering. And then JR does like the call, climb the ladder, kid, make yourself. I'm getting chills just thinking about it right now. <laughs> but uh, I remember just like doing, I'm like, this, like, I want this. Like, I want to give back this feeling that I have right now. And it's it, ever since that day, like, I've, I've just devoted my like entire life mm -hmm. to wrestling, just learning it, everything about it, the entertainment, the art. And then, uh, but yeah, it all started with like, uh, the Hardy Boys. And that's basically what made you think, I, I, I want to get in and do this stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. It was awesome. That's awesome. What about you, Stevie? What's your story? Funny enough, also the Hardy Boys. Ah. Good choice. Uh, I couldn't tell by your first matches. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you going to do? Uh, it was, I think it was TLC 2. I remember um, Jeff had just almost killed himself putting Devon through a stack of tables. Mm -hmm. And uh, Edge and Christian were in the ring. They had the ladder set up and there was a table across. And I was like, huh, what's going to go on with that? Like, what are we doing with that? And then nothing ever came of it. And I was like, huh, that's weird. They didn't do anything with this, but I am not dissatisfied <laughs> <laughs> because I just saw Jeff Hardy attempt to kill himself. Yes. And I was convinced that the man could fly at that point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that kind of got me hooked. You got you hooked and, and that, that you kind of stayed with it uh, since then, right? Oh, absolutely. So we already uh, answered this with Johnny, but like, so what uh, got you kind of decide I want to, I want to do this thing. Or was it just right off of that? It was actually just right off of that because I remember like, because, you know, he went through all the tables and then they panned across the, the crowd and everyone was like, oh my God, this is the most amazing thing in the world. And I was like, oh my God, they're right. I want to do that to people. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to, I want people to be all about this like that. I want to elicit that kind of reaction. I want to do that to myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, something that my not, body not should not go wrong. through, right? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so like from that, of course, you guys went through IWC's training school here. I believe you trained under uh, Chris LaRusso and uh, Andrew Palace, right? Yes. Um, so how did you kind of discover like those next steps? I, okay, I want to do this. How did you figure out where to do it? Well, for me, this is actually not the first time we had looked into wrestling school. This was actually thought of as a college alternative for a little bit because mm -hmm. I was so adamant about this is what I'm going to do. Oh, please. Somebody smarted you up, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in, I'm in college, too. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. my parents oh, have been good. very supportive, like all the way. And I was home for a weekend from St. Francis University the one weekend and um, I was like, you know what? I've met some people. I've made some connections that made this seem a lot more attainable. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I, I think I can do this. So I started looking into schools and went to a couple shows and saw some broken rings and decided, <laughs> I think I'm going to go with the, this one. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So the broken, we're talking about IWC at this point, right? So, so. I'm talking about companies in the area. <laughs> oh, that had broken rigs. Okay, yeah. okay. I, I was I was thinking some so incidents I, that I, happened with IWC. No, okay, I, I, no. scouted out, <laughs> I scouted out a couple schools in the area, mm -hmm. went to a couple shows from the people that had bad schools, saw some broken rings, went, I'm going to go with this one. I think this is probably my best option. That's awesome. So so ring quality was your... It was, was a deciding score. factor, yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, from there, of course, you guys definitely did, uh, you know, trade with uh, uh, IWC and those guys. Um, you know, what what did you did you have any expectations going into it? Were you kind of an open book, or did you? I know it, it's kind of you can find out a whole lot these days and uh, interviews and stuff. Uh, um, of course, um, what was the reaction for you when you finally got in there and, and got through your paces for it? Uh, well, my initial thought was, "Holy crap, I'm going to die! I am not in the shape for this." Um, but I mean, it was, I'm, I, I almost teared up a little bit the first time I stepped between the ropes. I was like, Oh my God, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's awesome. Um, uh, Johnny, what, what, how did you kind of transition to the, the finding the school and everything? 
All right. So I was never like big into indie wrestling mm -hmm. and you're just like, I, how do I get to WWE? Yeah. No, I, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I, well, I just want to get into wrestling. So I was asking around, uh, some people at work, I was talking to them about wrestling. They're like, Hey, I go to this, I go to these, uh, shows in the area. Why don't you message this guy? Here's his email and see if they have a school or something. So I messaged him and it wasn't IWC. I, I didn't know IWC mm -hmm. exists. I mean, I've seen videos. And, and, and it is weird. It, it, there's so many people I run into. And we're, this is something that we're trying to correct this year is one of the missions that we're trying to do with the sites and everything. Um, like people don't know wrestling is here, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of it's in its own cone, right? And, uh, and, and, and it's hard to discover that, right? Yeah, I uh, I sent this guy an email, and he was I was like, hey, do you guys have a school, or can you refer me to like a, a school, like one of the better schools in the area? Mm -hmm. He's like, no, we don't have a school anymore. But here is uh, Justin Plummer's email. Mm -hmm. Give him an email, and I uh, sent a message. The I wasn't able to do the first round of tryouts. I uh, I was stuck on steady afternoon shift. I had to wait yeah. for a bid to come up, do a steady midnight shift, so I can. Uh, make this happen so i waited until uh, this class mm -hmm. and uh i got my tryout and uh, I, I was pretty pumped about that awesome what was your reaction when you finally got in there and and, and got to do some stuff and go through the drills and say there you go it, it's not all jumping off of things yeah <laughs> uh my initial reaction was like this is like this is real mm -hmm. this is this can happen now mm -hmm. uh, i mean i remember like never being so uh i don't want to say like i was nervous i was like anxious driving there like, i i think i left like an extra hour and a half early just in case i didn't know where to go i was i was just like so stoked to have this opportunity and mm -hmm. it uh it was definitely uh a lot more physical than i thought going into it i think the first time i took a bump really like knock the wind out of me i'm like oh wow i'm like okay <laughs> it's not a trampoline it's right. not a trampoline <laughs> yeah and i'm like all right now i can now i just have to do this off the top rope and add a flip to it mm -hmm. <laughs> let's do this so tell me a little bit about the kind of development here you know you're the daredevil you're the uh you're you're the the rodent um and you know how, how did you guys come across like this kind of persona this is this an extension kind of thing or you know did you go through any iterations when getting to this point uh i would say uh it's basically who i who i always wanted to be i've always had this uh like insane mentality of like I wonder if I can jump off of this or if I, I wonder if I can add a flip to it. Yeah. A lot of times when I'm doing stuff and trying stuff out, I'm not sure if I can actually do it, mm -hmm. but I mean, I still got to try it. I still got to like send it. So, uh, like a lot of the flips and stuff I learned jumping off of like cliffs and bridges and barges, anything into the river, like over road. So a ring is easy. Uh, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. I wouldn't say that, but, uh, it, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've I've just always had this like daredevil mentality, like trying to push myself just a little further and a little higher, trying to add a little bit more to everything. Just mm -hmm. never being satisfied with the like, okay, I can do that. I'm good with this. I'll chill here. It's like, what can I add to that? Mm -hmm. Can I get like one more rotation out of it? Or <laughs> what about you, Stevie? How how was, how was your kind of development here? Um. Well, I, I came in with the judo background and mm -hmm. I was I was looking for, you know, something all right. So the nickname should probably reflect that a little bit, but not, you know, just be judo. It's a little blase for the demographic. But apparently it works as a nickname. Yeah, it works fine as a nickname. So the Ron I was just looking around like, okay, what sound cool? All right. Ronan, Master with Samurai. I I can get behind that. Okay. I can do something with that. So not anything nearly as exciting as, you know, I decided, you know, I'd stop throwing myself off of high things and almost killing myself and you know, start doing it to get a three count in the ring. I'm going to try and take somebody out with me. Oh. <laughs> so, so you guys had your first matches here just a little bit ago at Proving Ground 7 uh, available over there on the uh, IndieWrestling.us uh, website. 
Um, and uh, you guys uh, particularly pulled some kind of higher end opponents, yes. to say the least. Uh, in uh, the the uh, the money weight, Dylan Bostic, he's been around. I uh, famously had some encounters with Ryback on TV, uh, and uh, and then also DJ Z, who is, I mean, that is a full circle one there, because that is somebody that has trained with the former iteration of the IWC school, has literally been like everywhere, uh, including Impact Wrestling. So, what was kind of your, um, you know, going into it feeling when you when you saw you were um, kind of on the whiteboard with these names well i was i was curious you know can can he live up to the hype can i can i bring myself up to meet this person that has been on tv and Mm -hmm. in rivalries with former wwe champions Mm -hmm. i think i did okay and then i got hit in the crotch (laughs) it's starting to become a running theme i've noticed yeah yeah yeah, that's been happening that's been happening a lot i feel like i should invest in a cup and probably (laughs) stop going to the top rope (laughs) Uh, it's not fun up there no, no. Um, so, and, and it came out. It came out pretty good with Dylan, of course, as well. Um, it, <laughs> we got a guest in the in the in the studio. It's okay. It's just a fan. <laughs> uh, Johnny, you had of course DJ Z, which yes. I, I heard. I heard great things. Um, Thank you about uh, how you were in the ring there. Uh, it's uh, it was pretty surreal, honestly. I I remember getting asked like during training early on, like, you know, just uh, asking like, what are your dream matches? And you rattle off big names and like one of my like ideal, like, okay, maybe it could happen Mm -hmm. is DJ Z. Like, I'm like, there's no way I'll get him within like the first couple years. And I ended up debuting against him. It kind of like blew my mind that I had like this opportunity. And I I remember uh, hearing about it. I, I was at work and I didn't have, I don't have any uh, phone service at work. So, uh, whenever I went on break, it was like, it was like one o'clock in the morning and my phone's blowing up. I have like 20 missed messages, like missed calls, voicemails. I'm like, Oh my God, what is going on? I, I, I text somebody. I'm like, what's going on? They're like, dude, check social media. I'm like, which one? They're like, doesn't matter. I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> and I seen it. I, I popped, it popped up who I was faced. I screamed, dude. I, I let out like a noise <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God. It's it's my, my supervisor comes out and make sure that like, I'm not dying. <laughs> I'm like, look, he's like, I don't know what that is. I'm like, Oh, but I was just uh, like, yeah, it looked like a robot. <laughs> the picture, right? <laughs> but yeah, dude, I was just, uh, I was just so blown away and I knew that I had to like give everything I had to this. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think I upped my training a hundred times from, from that point on up until my match. And, uh, Oh man, that was uh, it was definitely an amazing experience. Um, I got the film. Uh, it is going to be coming out uh, soon on 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 the site too. But uh, I got to uh, sit in for a little bit of his lucha libre training session up in Cleveland the next day. So did you did you did you get any uh, lucha tips from him? I mean, he you know famously he talks about he he trains like three days a week with lucha up there in Chicago, and he goes out to Mexico and everything. Did you did you claw him anything else off of that? Uh, yeah, he uh, he dropped down a couple times while we were training for some like open rings to just like hang out, get a nice workout in, and he, every time he came down, he would always show us something. And uh, some of the things that I do now, I've actually learned from him. I don't want to give too much away. No, no. But uh, he, uh, he's definitely one of the uh, best wrestlers I've ever had a chance to be around. Very open-minded. Very, uh, I don't, I'm not sure like how to describe it, but he's always willing to work with you. He's always mm-hmm. willing to make sure you become better at the end of it. He's, uh, he's a world-class athlete and definitely an amazing person. We got Ben in the chat room. He's saying you both killed it at Proving, Gar- uh, Proving Ground, of course, uh, um, and Walter's agreeing as well. Um, we did have a question from our friend Bobby of J-Town that I think I mentioned earlier uh, about uh, who is your, just because, noticing you had your Lucio shirt, who is your uh, your main over in Overwatch? Uh, I do like healers. Uh, Lucio is definitely a top choice. Uh, Mora, and then... Every once in a while, if uh, I need some DPS, we'll go. I'll go Reaper. I've always been a big fan of those guys. 
This is completely alien to me because I haven't played the game yet. You know what? This is what other people feel like when we're losers. talking about wrestling. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that. You know. I've tried now to have know. regular conversation with people and it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, when the lingo starts creeping in a little bit, right? So um, tell me, you know, what are you guys kind of looking at for inspiration other than DJZ and the guys you guys you guys faced here, um, uh, uh, of course? Like, who are you kind of looking to? Is there any particular promotion that you're watching or anybody out there that has kind of got your attention, uh, whether it's inspiration or, or just kind of keeping an eye out for? Uh, definitely PCW up in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. I need to... Uh, a premiere. Yeah. Premier. I, I need to officially uh, prepare. Oh, okay. <laughs> I apologize. No, it's okay. Branding. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I definitely got to cut down a couple pounds. That uh, the welterweight tournament really appealed to me. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, hopefully getting an opportunity to show uh, my worth there. Awesome. What about you, Stevie? Um, there's no one in particular I'm looking to go right now. I'm pretty happy in IWC. Now, if you've got bookings. Let me know. I'll accept. Was I'm it? happy to work. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you guys have been getting around. You guys had like three or four matches since then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're place in West Virginia. Um, what was the name of it? I had it. I had it before we started this interview. Pro Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Inception. Inception. Yeah. I couldn't forget. You couldn't Pro remember Wrestling the third. Inception. Uh, I worked there. That was a good time. Um. But beyond that, I've been in IWC, so mm-hmm. you know, maybe future high stakes champion. Mm-hmm. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> you had to take it that, uh, of course, this past weekend um, at Unbreakable. But uh, okay, so what's the best and what is the best and worst thing about wrestling training? I would say the best. Uh, I'll start with the worst thing. Uh, worst thing from my experience is. The temperature uh it's it's like a uh, hot box and it's like everything just becomes a thousand times like harder in winter mm-hmm. oh. so like it, it's the extreme of whatever's happening yeah out there. and yeah. uh and you you can see the look on our uh trainers they're just like loving every second of it as, <laughs> as the lagoon starts to form in the middle of the ring mm-hmm. We're <laughs> slipping and sliding. There is a lot of like the you're going to go through what I went through. Like, oh, kind yeah. Of thing. Like this is the rite of passage, right? It's like you guys need to understand. Uh, not everybody has like the top facilities. Like this is what we've done. This is what a lot of people have done. You're going to mm-hmm. be humble. You're going to respect each and every time you get into a nice ring uh, in a nice environment. Mm hmm. You, you won't take anything for granted. Absolutely. But you, Stevie. Best thing I would say is probably, honestly, the community of it all. Meeting fans, meeting people like you, and unfortunately, Dime, <laughs> Professor, it's Archer. That's That's been just such an awesome experience is meeting people. Mm. The worst thing is Grape Squishers. <laughs> I will just note that right now. I think that was brought up on the last show too. Grape squishers. And for anybody that maybe didn't catch that, what is a grape squisher? <laughs> They're the worst. You just you grab the top rope, lean back, and start bringing your legs up. And High die. knees. Oh. High knees. It's just constant movement and just death. Just <laughs> death. How's that cardio, guys? It's terrible. I hate, <laughs> it. I hate it. I hate cardio work. I don't mind it. <laughs> it's not too too bad for me. Yeah, you you kind of do that all the time just for fun, anyway. I know, like yeah, it's great. I'd rather awesome. pick people up and put them down with force, you know, <laughs> beat up the planet with them. Uh, that, um, that takes too much work. <laughs> so of course, you guys will be uh, mainstays here probably for a little bit in IWC. You're getting out there, so keep an eye out uh, for these guys coming to your neighborhood, or tell your local promoter if you're outside the area to get them in. Uh, because I mean that's the way it happens. I mean, you guys need to get out, get different opponents, different oh, experiences, yeah. hit that road, of course. Um, so the other question, have you guys figured out your social media stuff yet? As the, do they do they talk about this in training? Yes, we had a very <laughs> we had an entire class just talking about nice. the importance of it and like the dangers Good. of it Good. more importantly. Good. 
Good. I'm glad to see that's integrated in training yeah. <laughs> at this point. So what is your social media? Uh, my Twitter, at Johnny underscore decent. And then Instagram, Johnny underscore patch, I believe. We got to roll this back because we were talking about this before the show. Explain why Johnny decent. I don't know. It was just like a, it was just something stupid that started back in high school. Somebody would call me. I'd answer the phone. Decent speaking. Hey, what time is it? Oh, I don't know. Half past decent. I, it, it, it's just, it just started as something stupid and something dumb. And it's just like, it always catches people off guard when I do it. They're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, decent. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know. It, it just like always stuck around. I, I always thought it was funny. A lot of people think it's stupid, which they're right. <laughs> but. but if you can make it your own, right? Yeah. Exactly. What about you, Stevie? Uh, on Instagram, it's at Stevie underscore LaBelle. And on Twitter, it's at Ronan underscore LaBelle. I kept go. everything nice and simple. And Facebook, just search Stevie LaBelle. You'll yeah. find me. Go check them out, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it looks like, man, you guys were in competition with Team Storm on uh, people on the live feed here for a little bit. So that's kind of impressive for the new guys here. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe future, you know, you're going to make sure there's not a three-time rookie of the year with uh, Jackson here? Yeah, we're going to make sure about that. Yeah. Uh, our class has come together and decided that no matter who wins, we just make sure it's one of us. Yeah. We can't deal with another year. That, that. that does that does add a little bit of a, like, hey, we're going to really put over, like, like there's, there's more fire underneath you, right? Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I can't hear Argos brag about it for another year. How is he going to carry a third trophy? I don't know. I think he's going to hire somebody to have him carry his trophy. Don't be. give him ideas, Patch. There you go. Oof. Well, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. And the guys that are joining us here in the live chat room at IndiaWrestling.us's Facebook page. Uh, check out everything, including these guys' first matches and their other matches coming up here soon on, actually, probably by the time you guys catch this on the podcast forum over at IndieWrestling.us. Um, please go uh, hit us up. Let us know anybody we should be talking about on the show. Again, at the good times at WrestlingNameShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. And until next time, support Indie Wrestling. For the taste of the poor eye Sing, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see it from a back down Act wild, steady sipping track This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com